Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about the floor and the ceiling because obviously we sit on the floor and the ceiling, so the floor and the ceiling are the closest boundary surface to us for reflection. So we all know that those reflections have to be managed if we're going to uh, generate any kind of quality audio product at all in our mixes or presentation. So the time signature of those reflections from floor and ceiling have to be managed because those are the two closest boundary surfaces. They're even closest than the sidewalls, which get way more attention. And I understand the reason for that because they have a direct impact on image focus, definition, sound stage width, and things like that. But the time signature of the floor or the ceiling reflections really needs to be taken into consideration because we all know from past videos and past uh, and the literature that it's always a balance between the direct and the reflected energy. It's how much uh, direct or source energy you get versus room sound. So you always want to try to achieve a balance between those. So like we said, the floor is the closest boundary surface. So what kind of treatment do we need on the floor? Well, the standard is, you know, wood, carpet. Those are your two opposites. You know, wood is reflective, carpet is absorptive. So the answer is, there is no answer. You have to balance it out with the rest of the surfaces, the rest of the boundary surfaces in the room. You also have to b balance it out with usage. I mean, if it's a high traffic studio, if it's a high traffic usage situation, you're probably going to be better with wood floors. Now, we can compensate for the reflections uh, off those surfaces with throw rugs and things like that, but the answer is really there is no answer. You know, to everybody's situation is different and it, and it really depends. If it's a vocal room and it's just you doing voiceovers in a vocal room, well, you know, then probably uh, you can choose any kind of surface material that works for you. But if it's a high traffic area, you're moving in amplifiers and equipment and stuff like that, you know, you're going to have to rethink it. So the ceiling obviously is the next closest. So what is our Treatment options. Well, first, let's talk about distances because oh, I see this every day. And it, 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 it's crazy. You know, I see people trying to make music in rooms with six foot ceiling heights. So can you imagine with six foot, the time signature at the listening position, what you're going to have or the monitoring position? I see seven foot. I see eight foot. All too small. All too small. You must have much more height. Minimum 11 feet, ideal 14. Now, I know that's not realistic, but I'm not about being realistic. I'm about sound quality. So you got to get these surface areas far away from your head. Not the floor, because you got to sit on it. But the ceiling is really critical. And then you have to, and there, like we say here, there is no substitute for distance. So treatment, what are our options? Absorption, diffusion, those are the only two that we, we can work with. The goal with the ceiling in most cases, because it's so low, is to make it psychoacoustically disappear. So we treat it with diffusion so the brain doesn't localize these reflections and go, oh, that's an eight foot ceiling. Oh, that's a six foot ceiling. That's a seven foot ceiling. So with diffusion on the ceiling, we can get a non localization thing going when we listen. So really, diffusion and absorption on the ceiling is kind of a band aid. We're kind of trying to minimize the psychoacoustic impact that our brain hears with all of these reflections and make our brain think that the room is larger. That's not an easy task to do. It's complicated. You have to design the right diffusion and the right absorption blend to achieve it, but you can do it. I've done it in, in rooms as low as eight and a half feet. You, know, you sit in the chair and you listen and you ask people, how far away is the ceiling? They always guess 11, 12, 13 feet. Well, that's because I've used diffusion and absorption in the right way. So treatment is critical. There is no substitute for distance. Get that 11 to 14 distance going for the ceiling. Uh, realize that the floor and the ceiling are your closest surfaces. So those are the reflections that you have to treat the most. It's always a balance between direct and reflected energy. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed our videos today, and if you did, we really would appreciate a thumbs up from you. If you have any questions or comments, you can go to the comment section, or you can go to our website, AcousticFields.com, and fill out the contact form. Subscribe to our channel, our YouTube channel. We're now doing two videos a week. If you have some ideas for topics, you can uh, submit those to us also. 
you're having room issues, we have that free room analysis. You can click on the button below and we'll compare your room to our database of 120 built rooms that uh, we built and actually measured. And I guarantee you, your room is in that database. So just click on the button below for the free room analysis. Thank you.